We right, we so we we're going to take a quick break, guys, and we'll be back. And we'll be back with our next guest, who is Kenyama Brown, uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Foreign Affairs Minister, State of the African Diaspora. We're going to be talking about the Lumi. So those of you that don't know about the Lumi, very intrigued. Watch this next part. It's very interesting, guys. Want to see some sign-ups afterwards. No money to impart whatsoever. In fact, they are giving away money. I'm telling you. Sounds very interesting. <laughs> I'll see you little, we'll see you, we'll see you guys in a short while. Okay. With House Party Queen. House Party Queen. House Party Queen. HPQ. House Party Queen on GY Radio. GY Radio with the House Party Queen. House Party House Queen. Party Queen. House Party Queen. There's only one, and she is original. The House Party Queen on GY Radio. One minute after two, got to say big ups to Spotlight Radio as well, because we're streaming live on Spotlight Radio. Big up to hey. Stick to seeing all the Spotlight family. All those on Mixcloud, Twitch TV and Facebook, thank you for joining us on the virtual count, the summer edition, the end of this series, <laughs> series number one of the House <coughs> Party Queen on the virtual couch. HPQ, all over to you. Thank you, my darling. I like that intro. You need to be on TV doing some kind of host intros. I'm telling you, that was HPQ. Over to you. I like that. I definitely like that. Yes, it's been a real summer special. It's been a mixed bag of um, discussions here, which is what I like. I don't like sometimes for it to be on all one even keel. It's nice to have a mix of That's topics right. and conversations. And, they you know, Sheldon the was... Of life. Exactly. Yeah. And Sheldon That's was a brilliant right. guest. Michelle, Michelle also her singing as we spoke about and then we're going to move on to discussing um the lumi and what that's all about this new Very digital african currency and i like i said i've got the minister of foreign affairs state of the african diaspora and he'll talk about what that is because they formed a region in africa and i don't want to say the wrong thing he'll probably pull me up about this but it's called the eco six they've kind of formed a government they've got a whole structure behind them also, and money has been pumped into this digital currency, a couple of trillion million dollars. And um, so they're giving people money every month, the equivalent of uh, $100 every month, up until 2023. So you've not got to buy anything, you've not got to invest anything, you've just got to open up the app, get an account and receive this money every month. And then what they're doing is they're partnering up with other places where you can spend the Lumi mm. also, mm. or you can keep the money and have it in investment and have it go crazy like how the Bitcoin has exploded and now is worth God knows how much thousands for one Bitcoin. And sounds the value brilliant. of brilliant. the the value of the Lumi is is around. It's, it's if you're looking at it in monetary terms, it's the equivalent of about 15 US dollars, but mm. it's measured in gold and solar energy. So. Wow. That's what it's backed upon. And we're going to talk about fiat currency as well. If you don't know anything about fiat currency, and I'm learning about all this stuff, fiat currency is paper money, like the British paper pound. Money. Yep, British pound mm -hmm. and the US dollar. That's what we call fiat currency. And it's actually got no value behind it. It's been given to us by the government, printed paper. They set what the value is. But apart from that, it's got no value behind it like gold, for example. So, and it's going to become obsolete by the time we reach 2040. So things like digital currencies are the way forward. So for people that are not investing in this kind of Bitcoin, blockchain, all these things that are going on, you do need to invest. It's where we're you know, going. You know, what, Paper currency will go. so many different ways of um, investing. And sometimes it's hard to, to know which one, I suppose, you know what I mean? Because I get people throw things at me all the time. You know, I do what? cash effects, as you know. You know I, mean? yep. I get things thrown at me, invited to come to this meeting, this Zoom meeting, that Zoom meeting, watch this video. I you know what? I've never watched any of those videos before. I tried to start watching them, but give it 30 seconds or so. I don't know. My mind has switched off. I've Same here. Same, Same here. I'm not... I'm not very good at watching those videos because sometimes there's too much information thrown at you and too much blocks and things that you need to look at and growth charts. I just want to see what money I'm getting at the end yeah, of the day. I think I just want to see. Show me the cost, money. What we're make. <laughs> Basically, yeah. how much and how much we're going to get. Back. Yeah. That's what do I need to do in between? Else. What's the minimum I need to do to make sure I get this money at the end of the yeah. day? And I think if they broke it down like that, then yeah, of course people would sign up. But making money is never easy. It's like no. trading. 
you know, it takes a lifetime sometimes to learn how to trade. And I think this is a somewhat to a degree of that. And we can't be greedy. Everything, you know, money's not free. It's not easy. No. You have to work for it. And the same you know, Israel, I think, with this. I think because yourself, myself are kind of busy people to sit down and concentrate on looking at videos and this and that is probably hard. But for some people, that's a full time job. I suppose yeah. if you're in it full time now, that's you. Because yeah. you've got so many other things going on, like myself. So I would sit down and like things. I'm in cash effects. I've never watched a cash effects video yet. And I've been there since September. And that's terrible, really. I <laughs> bought quite a few people behind me, but I've never actually watched it myself. You know what I mean? <laughs> the time. But that's what it is, man. So what have we got there? We've got, um, we've got five after two. Yep. And, and we're going to bring him on. Number three. We have. But just before we... Oh, well, we're going to bring him in. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Myself. Oh, we got you. <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. Can we bring him onto the big screen? Because I just want to see him looking. At, I mean, he's live and direct from Jamaica. Look at that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm live right from now? sunny Jamaica. Yes, I am. What part of <laughs> Jamaica you in? I'm in Spanish town, to be exact. This is my hometown. Not too far from so my family. We're in, we're, in, we're in Old Arbor, Marley Mount. Marley Mount, yes, yes, yes. Quite <laughs> a number far. of. Not, not very far away from where I am as we speak. Not at all. It's roughly. <laughs> A 15 minute drive. That's right. Straight up yes, Spanish and I do have really. family in Marley Mount as well. Yes. Okay. Welcome to the virtual couch, HPQ. Indeed, my pleasure. I'm, it's the second time I'm being interviewed by, by Alison. Yes, the it party is. Queen. Thank yes, you. So thank you again. I'm, I've, I'm feel very honored to be here a second time. And I sincerely hope my time here will be of benefit to you and your listeners. Of thank course. You. Excellent. Well, the first time I met you was on a business networking event where they showcased about the Lumi. I immediately was very intrigued about what's going on here. I mean, I love technology anyway. I kind of trying to want to move with times. So I understand somewhat about digital currencies and I kind of want to invest within my own communities now. Um, and, you know, since I suppose the Black Lives uh, Movement and everything, that's what's been going on. And I think it's important. And I think it's important that we try to figure out how we self-finance, self-invest and strengthen our communities in order for us to go out there and be just as rich as any other country that's out there. So, you know, when you spoke about this, I just thought, other people need to know about this. Seriously, we need to kind of spread the word. And it isn't just a networking opportunity. I've been onto YouTube. I've I've listened to videos. I've listened to other people speaking, and it is it's it's a viable thing that's going on here. And so this is why I brought you on here today, just to explain to everybody what this is, well, how it started, what this is, and what they need to do to become vested in in this digital currency. So just to start this off, you know, please introduce yourself. You know, in terms of where. Uh, the official body you're from and what the Eco6 is, so we can then start on to the Lumi. Thank you. Yes, good morning again to you and your listeners. I am Kenny Ama Brown and I am the Minister of Foreign Affairs for the State of the African Diaspora. Um, I represent an organization that, is, that represents a... It really started um, in sometime around 2017 um, and it was constructed, it was actually included in the Charter of the African Union. Uh, there was supposed to have been a state of the African diaspora, which would be a structured way in which the African continent, through the African Union, would have some interface with the African diaspora. And so, not until 2017, the then head of the African Union, um, he was the then president of Mauritania. He summoned Dr. Louis George Ted from France, who headed a major black advocacy organization, to start the Africa, the state of the African diaspora, which he did. And in starting it, he created a government within it. So mm. he started it with an executive, which two vice prime ministers along with him. He had a, a, there's a parliament with members of parliament, and then there's a diplomatic corps of ambassadors. Yeah. So it, it, it runs through the length and breadth of the diaspora and also on the continent. Ultimately, our aim is to unite the African family and to really bring us closer together and to create that bridge between the diaspora of Africa and the continent and vice versa. So these are some of the things that were done. 
And then sometime around 2018, um, the economic community of the sixth region was also formed by way of a treaty. And this was done in the Maroon towns of a compound. And they felt that, again, the then um, ambassador of the African Union to the diaspora, um, she visited the Maroon town in Jamaica, a compound. Mm -hmm. which if we understand history, the Maroons were the first, even before Haiti, to secure their own freedom. Correct, So yes. it was felt then that they should, have be, they should be the official siege of the sixth region and understand what the sixth region is. Africa is divided in five regions, north, south, east, west, and central. And the sixth region is considered anywhere outside of the diaspora. So... Eco-6 really was modeled off a similar structure that they have in Africa. Each of the regions of Af Africa has an economic block. So the West African states, their economic block would be ECOWAS and the South, the South African region, the South, Southern region rather. Yeah. Um, they have SADC. So it was felt that there needed to be an economic block for the sixth region. And, and they henceforth saw the rise of the Eco-6 region. And it is from there, Eco-6 also, we saw the budding and the starting of the Lumi. That was how it was invented to uh, Mr. Timothy McPherson, who later got the title of Chief Samako. And he started this, and that's where it started. Okay. So, so just to break you there for one second, can you just explain Please. what the Lumi is or what a digital currency is? I gave them a little bit of a background, uh, just a little mm -hmm. bit of a background about digital currencies and the <laughs> fact that, that our money that we know as fiat money is going to become obsolete by, by 2040 and obviously digital currency is the way forward. But, but tell us what, what, what this Lumi is, where the idea is born from and what its intentions are or objectives. So the Lumi was really formed, um, and, and kudos have to be given to the creator and inventor of the Lumi, which is Chief Timothy McPherson. And I think if you hear his, his story, you would you'd find it simply fascinating, because he, his mother um, is from Portland, Maroon Town in Portland, so he is a Maroon himself. He was born in Canada, but also but grew up in Germany. So that's a person with a whole mix of yeah. different cultures. And I think when persons are exposed to different cultures, it helps to enhance your maturity, I believe. And I think he has worked in the banking system in Europe for several years. And then he realized that Europeans actually wanted to use a lot of the African precious mineral resources to assist and to add further value to their fin financial systems. Yeah. And he saw this. Um, the good thing was many of the African um, countries had refused to do this. And he saw that as a genuine opportunity for a currency to be created that could uplift the diaspora and also the continent. So in essence, to put it in a simpler form, it is ironic that most of the countries of the world with some of the most precious mineral resources are the countries that are the poorest. And this is simply because the economic system of the world as we know it, it basically excludes many of the countries in Africa that has many of the mineral resources. And it is ironic that it is when these mineral resources are extracted by our more affluent um, persons from Europe or neighbors or interests and take it back to Europe that great value is extracted from these mineral resources. But the very people who have these mineral resources who are endowed with it can't turn any value with it. So it it's simply says to you that, that the economic system never favors the masses of the people. So it was then felt that there needed to be the creation of a currency that can tap into these mineral resources to give it the value that it truly needs. And 
An example of this can be seen in Kuwait, the Kuwaiti dinar, where they use their petroleum industry to back the value of their currency. And that also similarly takes place in, with the Oman real. Okay. So these are some of the things that, that sets the Lumi apart from, from what it seeks to give up Africa an economic um, reset. So this is essentially what it is. Okay, and I, I mentioned this on my uh, radio show when I first interviewed you. Um, Queen of uh, Sheba, head of the African Kingdom's Federation, was actually in an interview and she was yeah. talking about the Lumi and why it, was in, in, um, why it was invented and why it was needed. And I just want to, just for the, the sake of the listeners, I just extracted some of what she said because it was quite a powerful statement. And she said that... Powerful um, indeed. Yes, Africa is magnificent, beautiful, and a powerful continent on this place. We are the home of nations and the people born on this earth, but also the currencies of Africa cannot be used outside Africa. So it's time for the African diaspora to come together, be invincible, as when you come together, you can ensure a better legacy and change the course of African history, as it's our heritage to be rich and fruitful. Over 30% of the world's wealth has come from Africa, yet over 480 billion worth of debt is owed. We have the sun and if we have the energy and the wealth, then we would have something to eradicate the word poverty from the very vocabulary associated with the African continent and support African nations and government in exercising their functions to ensure Africa is head but not tail. So you see the Lumi is an important driver towards eradicating this debt and becoming rich and a powerful nation that it actually should be. So that was quite a statement from the Queen of Sheba there. And, and it kind of got me thinking and looking into this a little bit more about how to become involved, you know, with the Lumi and, and ensuring uh, the growth and richness for Africa. So, so the Lumi itself, tell us about, you know, how, um, how it actually is. What, what, what is the Lumi exactly? How is it um, so, monetized? So, so what the, the Lumi, um, what it is really, it is, it seeks to tap into, the, as you said, as the Queen had alluded to in her speech, it seeks to tap into the mineral resources of the continent. And what further helps to strengthen the Lumi is that it started size genesis in a compound in, in the Maroon villages. It started there. And it yeah. too had its challenges, even the authorities in Jamaica don't recognize it. And since then, the inventor had, had a greater vision and he left Jamaica and went to the continent where he saw the Lumi being embraced by the African Kingdom's Federation, which the Queen of Sheba is, is the head of this. And this is where they adapted the Lumi as their official currency. And in adapting the Lumi, many of the kingdoms have committed and gave their commitment to utilize the mineral resources that they have in their ancestral lands to also further to further back the Lumi. And many of these lands are, are endowed with gold, um, cobalt, platinum, emeralds, diamonds, you name it. So the Lumi is a very valuable currency. But a further thing that has to be mentioned is that the Lumi seeks to utilize solar energy. Now, solar energy is not what we think it is. It is something that can be quantified pretty much the same way you can do the um, petroleum. Mm. It now can be quantified. For example, entities such as H2 Industries out of Germany, they have actually found a technology that enables you to trap the solar energy and, and mixing it with liquid hydrogen that enables you to store it in a, in a form that in tanks that it, you, it can be transportable. And this is on the cutting head, edge. Okay. This, by virtue of that, makes solar energy something that you can actually quantify. And it is said that the Lumi is valued at a 100 kilowatt hours of solar energy, which is equivalent to four grains of gold. And this is what is the valuation that is behind the Lumi. So the Lumi doesn't depend on gross domestic product, which is the main determinant of the value of any other, any of your, the fiat currencies that you see. 
and who determines the gross domestic product, that is the economic system that currently exists that never favors the African continent or her diaspora. So we have to seek to, we have to pull ourselves up. So the loom is one such instrument that will be utilized to do so. So this is what it is. Okay, and so how is the Lumi funded or, or backed? What is, it, what is it backed by? Because there's an initiative going on right now with the Lumi. Uh, as, I've, as I've indicated, it is backed by solar energy and gold, which is much of the gold that is committed through the African Kingdoms Federation and otherwise. So that is what, what gives the Lumi its value. And of course, it is now being widely traded. And so it is behind... It is being traded in many of the communities on the continent and within the diaspora. And um, over time, it will also be market driven. So it will also gain value by virtue of the fact that it is being traded within the communities. Because ultimately, the loom is also there to engender trade amongst the African communities. And in doing this, this is one of the ways that we can restart trading amongst ourselves. So if we look at other ethnic groups, such as the Chinese, the Indians, or even the Jewish communities, and you do any meaningful research, you will realize that when money enters these communities, they stay on average 30 days. What is most unique, it doesn't matter where the African community is, whether it be in the Caribbean, South America, Central or North America, and even on the continent, you find certain common features that exist in all of these African communities. And that is, when money goes in, it doesn't stay very long. It is said that it stays on average between 6 to 12 hours. And I think we find that apparent through the Chinese, which is probably one of the number one uh, trading the Chinese, partners there. And the Chinese money stays within their community. So exactly. The Lumi exactly. was created to, to enable trade, greater trade amongst the African communities. And so this is one of the ways in which loom will also get value because it will be market driven. So as long as you have demand and supply, this will also drive the value of the loom, like, like anything else. Okay, so there's a, a stimulus package, right, for the loomy? Yes, oh, yes, indeed, yes. yes. Do you want to tell package. us, do you want to tell us a little so bit about the stimulus? The, Yes, yes, indeed, I can. Um, the stimulus package was really created through the, the, the Eco6 community, which is chaired by Chief Simako himself. And he's, it was designed as our response to the global pandemic. As you know, with COVID-19, there has to be something. Yeah. And so it was, they designed a program that sought to give every single wallet holder of um, a Swiffin wallet, which is the main platform that the Lumi trades on, 6.62 um, Lumi, sorry, 6.26 Lumi every month, which is equivalent to 100 US dollars. This is a program that should go on for three years. It started in October 2020 and is slated to end October 2023. And this is from the African Diaspora Central Bank, which was formerly the Central Solar Reserve Bank of a compound, but it has since changed in keeping with the charter of the Eco-6 Treaty. Yeah. And this is the central bank that oversees the loom. So the loom is not a cryptocurrency. It is, in fact, a digital currency. That is, its operation is overseen by a central bank. And I think that's quite important for, for, for us to make that clear that the Lumi is not a cryptocurrency, okay? It's a digital it is, currency. It is not. Absolutely not. It's a digital currency. Because what people has, have to understand is that with cryptocurrencies, there, it's a highly volatile currency. Yes, it has a platform that enables trade and so on. For example, Bitcoin has blockchain or Ethereum has Etherscan. But it is, it is highly volatile. Um, it relies on a lot of mining to be taking place behind the scenes. And it can be manipulated by many different interest groups depending on what they seek to do, which is the instability of cryptocurrencies. 
is what makes it unattractive. It has had its moments of success. I think earlier this year or late last year, Bitcoin had a major jump, but since then it has been declining rapidly. And this is mm -hmm. not the kind of currency that one would want to use to, to put against your economy. So with the digital currency, it has all the features of a cryptocurrency, a digital platform which facilitates trade in real time. It has all of these features. However, it has a central bank that manages its operation, manages its supply and distribution just to ensure that it is not susceptible to outside interests that can manipulate the value of the currency. So this is, this is essentially a more modern way of handling our financial systems. So it, it offers greater con convenience to the consumers, but also still has that structure behind it that makes it a little bit more predictable, especially when you're investing. Thank you. Okay. And so how do people, who, who can get this stimulus then? How, how do they sign up for this? It's, you know, Ultimately, as I always say, it is something for the global African family, so it is for anyone. And I believe Africa is the creator of civilization, so we, we don't exclude anyone. So as long as you are able to have an Android phone and go in your Google Play Store and type ECO, the number six, Lumi, which is one, one word or one phrase, and, and put this in the slot, then you will see an app coming up. Download, follow the inst instructions. It is pretty self-explanatory. And download and be a part of it. If you have an Apple device, then naturally you can do it via the website, which is, to access this, it is platform.swifin, that is S-W-I-F-I-N, dot com. And from there, similarly, you follow the procedures and you will have your wallet. As long as you're a wallet holder, every 28th of the month, you will receive 6.26 Lumi. The program would have already started from October 2020. So if you, if you enter now, you will get the remainder of the stimulus that is there until October 2023. So this is how you will access it. And so there's no upfront fees at all that anyone has to spend. They're literally there, getting money. It is, it is absolutely free. Um, on, uh, we have heard reports that persons are charging money for persons to, to register. I will use this opportunity to tell them it is, there is no fees required because it is something that is completely and absolutely free. Now, if someone says they're going to do it for you and you want to pay them, that's a choice you make. But understand for the record that there is no hidden fees. There are no charges for this. This is our contribution. And response to the global pandemic just to make it very clear okay so then people get this money every month in their wallets up until 2023 so then they've got all this all right. Illumi in there what happens afterwards can can we spend it <laughs> ideally again <laughs> we, we I, I always tell people to desist from being overly um, consumerist I think we have to learn that when we are creating our own currency and we want to create a value, um, quickly and easily trading it is not always the best way. Um, we are saying at the end of the day, we would prefer you hold. It's important to hold. There's a number of things taking place as we speak. There are a number of countries who have started the process of assimilating the loom into their formal economy. And it is happening on the continent in some of the territories. And it's a chain. It's, that, it's a process that has started. It has not yet been concluded. And the relevant announcements have not been made. And it is really not for me to do it. I think for mm -hmm. protocol reasons. Um, matters such as this, such as these that are uh, monumental, I think the leadership of the respective territories should be afforded the opportunity. To make these announcements so i can only give you an indication of where the trends are going and what is taking place okay
But um, I, what I want to do is kind of like emphasize the fact that um, the Lumi currency is there. Um, it's got several reasons to be there. It's you want to support climate change, develop solar energy. You want to eradicate the debt. Yes. You want to be a fo an economic force unto your own. Um, and you want to be head to tail with the rest of the world. You know, at the end of the day, African, you know, everything associated with Africa is always seen as um, um, corruption and, and poverty. Or, or violence to some certain extreme. And there's nothing about the wealth that Africa actually holds. And, you know, like everybody else, I'm, I'm tired of those pictures being displayed of Africa. And, you know, it is a rich and powerful country and, and we should be going to head to tail with the rest of the world and developing our own currency. If he's still there. Hello, yes. Um... Like, like you said, I, I do agree that the, the images that come out of Africa are not the most wholesome and not the most encouraging. Um, but I always believe, like anything else, um, you always have the good and the bad. And it's a matter of what you choose to highlight. Um, I believe Africa is still a continent that has tremendous potential and tremendous opportunities and is making tremendous strides. Uh, it's just unfortunate. Um, Western media, I believe, oftentimes doesn't capture the better side of Africa. I think in any country of the world, you're going to find corruption. In any country of the world, you're going to find some of the very things that they oftentimes um, demonstrate that is taking place in Africa. It is happening in other parts of the world. I, too, had my own um, mal-understandings. And when I had the opportunity to visit the continent in 2017, I was blown away. And my first entry to the continent was Kenya. And I was blown away. It was never the Kenya that I thought it would be. And it was just simply amazing. It reminded me of a bigger version of Jamaica. That's why I felt at home. And I think what <laughs> did it for me, when I went through immigration and completed the process, the immigration officer said to me, welcome. Oh, I, I immediately wow. came out of the airport and I really, I knelt down on my knees and I kissed the ground and I said, my mother, your child has come back home. And I think this is, this is the driving force behind what we do at SOAD and Eco6. We want to bring the continent to the diaspora and the diaspora to the continent. These are the very things that Marcus Garvey would have spoken about. These are the very things that uh, uh, Bob Marley sang about and people like uh, Malcolm X or many other great people who would have spoken. The Kwame Nkrumah, the, the Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie and all of these other great leaders, the Jomo Kenyatta, the Julius Nairobi, and I could go on. The Jerry Rollins. These are the very things they speak of. So we continue to do that work humbly, quietly, safely, but most profoundly. We are doing our part to enhance the welfare of the global African family. Okay. And so you're, you're in Jamaica right now and obviously uh, promoting the, the, the Lumi also. How well received is it in Jamaica? Wow, that, that's a touchy question, eh? It's not that touchy, <laughs> but I'll respond. Um, it, is, it is doing pretty well, quite, quite frankly. Um, Jamaica, Jamaica's situation is quite unique. Um, and I, and I, it is important that I be very honest. It, start, it saw its genesis in the Maroon community. And there mm -hmm. within the Maroon community, there were some upheaval. There were some disagreements. There were some misplaced ideals. And... Also, our own Bank of Jamaica never, never sought to countenance the, the loom in any, any possible way. And I always say, if your own people don't frown upon you, maybe that's, that means you're not doing something. Because when I, <laughs> Marcus Garvey was innovating with political thought and um, black issues and, and black advocacy, he was frowned upon by his own people. He was seen as a swindler, thief, a charlatan, and, and I could go on. 
and he left Jamaica, went to overseas, and he built an organization called UNIA that has a following of mm -hmm. over 10 to 15 million blacks. And the rest is history. And Marley did the same when he innovated the reggae music. He was just simply seen as a dirty-haired Rasta boy from Trench Town. And like anything else, they, they also tried to kill him. So yeah. he had to take, take it upon himself and have a self-imposed exile in Britain, and that's where he did the Exodus album, and from then, there was no turning back. Today, Mali's an icon. He was equally frowned upon by his own people. The loom is following the same path, so I think being frowned upon is something I expect, because as an old Jamaican saying would always say, people don't throw stones at a mango tree that doesn't have fruits on it. They throw stones on it yeah. to try and get the fruit that is on the tree, so... And I think people just have a natural level of nervousness. And I think from both sides, you're gonna, you, you might see this. I mean, the big establishments don't want uh, Africa probably to grow and have its own digital currency. So you're probably going to get some backlash against the, the bigger institutions. Then obviously you've got the people that you actually want to, to join and use the Lumi. Also, it's something new. They don't know it. You know, when you're used to something like paper money, it's easy, it's it's tangible, you can feel it, you can see it, you know it's value because that's what you've been taught to know it's value. Um, and so with something new, and it, that's the reason why sometimes I think it's taken a while for, for Bitcoin to, to actually um, grow the way that it's grown also. So that there's a level of nervousness and a level of or lack of knowledge from people about currencies and where we're going because as we've spoken about, we're entering the fourth revolution, the, the digital revolution, right? This is a digitalized age we're moving into. And so just it's just a, it's just a natural evolvement to move on to yes, a digital yes, currency. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's correct. I, I, you know, I believe people will always seek to. Oh, I knew we were losing him there for a second. Hopefully, and... hopefully we join us. Yeah, but as I said, we were talking about, like I said, the the fourth uh, revolution, which I said is the digital uh, revolution. Oh, well, there we go. We've got him back slightly. But yeah, as to Natalie's yes, comments, um, yes, banks will be afraid for sure. And they will probably try and stand up against the Lumi to try and eradicate it at some points. Are you back with us now? Uh, Elmer Brown? Are you hearing me? Yes, we can are hear you. Are you hearing me now? Yes, we are. Thank you. Uh, people, people will always seek to do what they believe. They will gravitate to what they're used to and what seems to be normal based on the construct of the system around us. But I think what, you know, I will refer to a biblical scripture that says that um, the real children of Israel, which is Africans, they will be in bondage for 400 years. And it is said that the first slave, set of slave ships left Africa sometime around 1620. And I believe that um, 2020 would have marked that 400 years. So I believe it is now is the time for Africa, that they are coming, slowly coming out of this. And I see a lot of things happen, happening as being prophetic because what has significantly assisted the Loomis movement is that monumentally, the African Union signed the African Free Trade Area Agreement. This enables the continent for the first time in its history for them to be able to trade amongst themselves. So yeah. in, when you look at it, all, of Af all throughout the length and breadth of Africa, you can find all of the natural resources that the world requires. But the difference is they never traded amongst themselves. For the first time, they are now trading amongst themselves. And this is one of the ingredients that I believe will lead to the economic renaissance of the African continent. And this is happening at the same time with the creation of the loom. So with the free trade area agreement, they have established an African Central Bank, which is to be the central bank for all central banks in Africa. And they have also established AFRA, which is the African Financial Regulatory Authority. And this is mm. to regulate all of the financial institutions on the continent. 
Well, I am pleased to announce that the African Central Bank and AFRA have both recognized Lumi as an official currency of wow. the continent. So that is a Fantastic. major achievement. So I say all of that to really say this, that the future of Lumi is bright. We understand the challenges out there. People will always resist things that are new. But in order to do something special and to make a change in your life, we all have to be bold. And the bold step has been taken with the loom. And we are here. Yeah. And here to stay, I, may, I might add. And I, I love that. And um, how can we in the UK become involved in this? Is it just... Is it just a matter of signing up for the Lumi? Where, where can people get more information from if they wish to seek more information about there, this? There are, there are a number of organizations that are involved in the distribution and promotion of the Lumi, some of which I'm, I don't have them readily at my fingertips as we speak. But also the state of the African diaspora, we do have ambassadors and members of parliaments in the UK who are also equally working in promoting the loom. So if you do a search on the internet for the state of the African diaspora, you can see a whole host of our ambassadors and MPs and where they're situated. And there are also other um, programs that you can be a part of. Like for example, the Queen of Sheba, she has a program every Monday that is streamed live all across the continent and the diaspora. And there, it also has links to a number of organizations globally that are involved in the promotion of the league. And I think that is, um, you can stream on Twitter, YouTube, and you can see programs with the Queen of Sheba, and you can have further connections uh, that way. Okay. Um, should we keep that question on screen right now? Because Natalie has asked a, a good question here. And it was, it was one of the questions I was going to ask uh, next, which was how can we be assured about this currency and that it's not open to corruption? And Natalie's put, you know, young professionals do not want to hear the backstory of Garvey and the children of Israel. They want cold, hard facts. <laughs> how secure is the platform? How to network with other traders? Uh, it's 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 a secured platform that facilitates trade, um, and I think on a daily basis, on average, we see trade amounting to roughly a billion dollars that's taking place. That is trading taking place within the communities. Um, it is going through a process where we are globally looking at merchants who are now using their opportunities to trade things, some of their commodities, for people to purchase it in loom. And these are some of the things taking place. There are some outlets in Jamaica. There are few. And there are some outlets in the UK. But this is, is, this is a start. They are, it's a growing list. And as I've indicated before, it is now that the, the process has started where a number of economies, a number of territories on the African continent have started to assimilate the, the Lumi um, into their financial system. So it is... It is at its in its embryonic stage, but over time it's it's growing. Yeah. Thank you. And and as another uh, as another word to, to Natalie, as with anything that's new, you have to give it time to grow. The Lumi it's is is, is very, very new. When was the first issuance of the Lumi? I'm trying to think. In the first issuance of it, I believe, was somewhere around 2018, 2019. Um, yeah. and it first started with a fiat version, but there is a fiat version of the Lumi. Oh. There was, but it was felt that over time, digital currency was the, the best place to go. So, uh, henceforth, the, the then Central Reserve Solar Bank partnered with a group of innovators out of South Africa and the UK that created the Swiftin platform. And it is from there that the digital currency of the loan was facilitated. And we, it is here today. Um, roughly four years later. Okay. So I think the Lumi prides itself as the first central bank issued digital currency that the world has seen. There has been no other currency before the Lumi. And that's amazing. I think we need to give a round of applause for that for sure. But again, coming back to, 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 to Natalie's comment there, um, 
no, we don't want to hear the, the backstory of, of Garvey and, and Israel. And yes, we do want cold, hard facts. But how secure are the apps that we use where we store our credit card information? How many times has Google been broken into? How many times has PayPal and all these other platforms that we use to put our monies onto and siphoning off our accounts? So, you know, why shouldn't we back something that is for black people, for the black community and for the growth of us? You know, and we're questioning in this something that's new um, rather than some of the the applications that we're using where these guys have been out there for what 20 30 years and they still can't secure our systems banking systems still can't um, secure our information so you know we have to put our belief in some things that's okay Natalie <laughs> we do have to try and put our belief in some things we do have to try and we do have to try to come together as a community I've, I, I pretty much strongly believe that and also you're not actually investing any money to even figure that you're going to lose anything I think the most corruption you might get is 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 looking at the value of the Lumi and whether it goes up or down or if anyone's going to get into your wallet. But you're not. There's no outlay of money for us into this. It's simply to allow trading between our black communities and having some sort of currency to allow us to do it, as opposed to using a fiat currency. Did I get that succinctly, Minister? More, <laughs> that's correct. But moreover, it utilizes mineral resources. That, funny enough are the most stable mineral resources that the world has seen. We have the sunlight, which is in abundance. And again, Africa has showcased itself as being, again, more endowed than any other continent. It has the most sunlight. So that, that is also something, again, that Africa is, is richly endowed. Um, Just... Gold is also another commodity. And gold is a fairly stable commodity since time, time and memorial. Gold has been stable. It has never been the commodity that has, has that has lost value at any great depth okay um sorry i just had a message there I beg your pardon well could i um, could i say something though i, I if, if i may um i know people tend to say that to hear the story of gavi and so people don't want to hear that but my response to that is very simple the, there's an old adage that says, the more things change, the more they remain the same. The very things that Marcus Garvey spoke of then, and the very things that people like Amali, he sang about, as, they are as relevant today as they were then. So even though we want to think that you don't want to hear, but it, the very things they told us then is still relevant today. This is just my view. Thank you. That's okay. The other thing I just wanted to quickly speak about, because I'm just quite conscious of time, is is yeah. regarding harnessing solar energy, because we're trying to get around how solar energy is is valuable, because as we know, it's just the sunshine coming down, you know, can you get it in a, in a bottle and capture it and, and transport it somewhere? We know it's not that. And I know you touched upon it, that you said some, somewhere yeah. they, they found a way of harnessing it and mixing it with, with hydrogen to be able to liquidize transport it, it sorry liquidize it to be able to, to to transport it and i mean what is the value of of energy right now because for me it's it's not a commodity i even thought about being valuable i, I think about gold and diamonds and yes it is oil. it is it is um it was never a commodity that saw itself in the market like a gold cobalt or platinum or uranium but it is fast getting there and, and this is why I alluded to um, companies such as H2 Industries that, are, that have created a technology that is able to harness the energy of the sun and have it in a storable form. Um, but there are many others. That's just only one. But there are many other companies that are doing this. So currently, as we speak, the, it is solar energy is fast becoming the new energy commodity that we're going to be able to to quantify, especially with the advent of electric cars, solar yeah. energy, I understand that there are cars that, that are now being developed to also utilize solar energy. So the future for solar, solar is the future. And anyone will tell you that um, fossil fuel, as we know it, is really in its last days. It is. Much of the resources of the world um, and places that we know it are depleting. In places like Saudi Arabia, I understand that the, the amount of um, 
fossil fuel that they have available is fast declining. But what I understand is that they have innovated and they they have invested heavily in solar energy. And these are some of the indicators that people are seeing that tells you of the right future that solar energy has. And this and this is where it's quite interesting actually, because most of the world have garnered its riches on on the use of fossil fuels, for example, and and you know pillaging Africa of its natural resources also. And I often feel like there's going to be some sort of well, what's the word for it? It's not renaissance, but with the fact that they are depleting and Africa is in abundance of sunshine and being able to harness some of the solar energy, I just think it's going to just put us in a different place. And Akon, I don't, I don't know if you remember, Akon, the rapper, invested heavily yes, he's building, into he's solar building energy. A city. Yes. Yep, and he has made a fortune, not because he just wants to make money, but because he's invested into solar energy and the benefits that he's reaped from that um, is incredible. And he's also given back. He's not just making money. He gives a lot back in Africa also. Mm -hmm. That's that's correct, and it's the very same thing I'm saying. It it's it does even again I, I, as I said earlier, the Saudis they their their reliance on fossil fuel. They, their studies have shown that their supplies are depleting. They probably have probably another tw 10, 10 years left or ten to fifteen years, and they are some of the biggest investors in solar energy as we speak, which tells you that is where the new frontier is. And I think people like Akon would have seen this through his research yeah. and have invested wisely and has already made a fortune. And yes, it is yes. not even at that point as yet, but he's making a fortune. So Africa stands to benefit tremendously um, when this really comes to, to take form and effect. So long as I hope that we own it and we don't get trading partners coming to take it away as what they have done for years with Africa. Um, and so which is why, you know, I'm so interested in this Lumi and trying to, you know, bring everything back to us and being able to trade amongst. I, I mean, I'm still in shock that Africa still can't quite trade with each other. And it's taken something like this digital currency to come out to enable that. Mm -hmm. Yes, and as you said, you were using the word renaissance, but it, it's in truth, in fact, a rebirth. It is a renaissance. It's, it's a, a rebirth of the global African economy, uh, both mm. in the diaspora and the, on the continent, because much of the currencies of some of the ter many of the territories in Africa are laden with debt, and of such, um, those currencies will never recover not in the foreseeable future. So the Lume presents an opportunity for many of these territories for them to have a restart through the utilization and adoption of a new currency that has a strong value back in it and it is being widely traded within the continent itself and not with outside neighbors, but just within. I believe the future is bright. Yeah. I agree. I agree, definitely. Well, we are coming up to that time, yes. and I realise you've got a lot going on behind you back there yes. <laughs> as well. You've got a few people there. <laughs> and I want to kind of give you back some you know, time. It's, it's, uh, it's Sunday in Jamaica, so I usually go for my morning jog. I run four miles every, um, every Sunday morning, so I look yeah. forward to it. But I made time for this program because I believe it is important. It's important, it is strategic, it is absolutely essential because yeah. this program is like these that gives me the opportunity to have interface not just with you but also with your listeners. And we, this opportunity is, it enables me to disseminate so much needed information and to, 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 to demystify, to, you know, to lessen some of the views people may have that are not entirely correct. So yeah. this is what we're doing. So again, I thank you for affording me the opportunity the second time around. <laughs> oh, it's a real pleasure. And I'm looking to bring yes. you on a third time. Don't worry. I haven't finished oh my. with you yet. <laughs> <laughs> You're not done with me yet. <laughs> I'm not done with you yet. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> but, um, you know, Natalie's been quite instrumental in this chat today. And I thank you so much for your comments today, Natalie. I really do appreciate your your interactiveness in the chat. But she had brought yes. something up there. Did you take it off screen there, Shui? Right. So she, she says, Minister, there are 44 million of us in CARICOM. I hope you are speaking to that network. We are, we are currently, as we speak, um, I think this later this week, we're planning to make an approach to the, the head of Caracol, I think it's Gaston Brow, the Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda. Mm -hmm. But we do have ambassadors throughout the length and breadth of Caracol. But like anything else, we are new. So it is going to take time. It's going to take an approach. It's going to take uh, understanding. And it is not something that will happen overnight. But we are prepared and we understand and we expect it because nothing, yes. nothing new is adopted easily. So we are going through the paces, we are taking all the steps, we are speaking to the right people, and we are doing what we have to do. In fact, currently in Jamaica, we are partnering with Olivia Sterling, Lady Ya from the UK, to create an inaugural flight to Ghana from Jamaica. Um, this, trip, this flight should leave August 13th, and it goes up until the 27th. This will be our inaugural flight, and this is something that SOAD and Eco6 are instrumental in. And this is one of the ways in which we are trying to bring persons from the diaspora back to the continent. And we are planning to go to Ghana. And we are using this opportunity to make all the necessary connections. We are hoping to bring representatives from the government of Guyana and also from Jamaica to also have bilateral discussions with the government members in, in Ghana and we want to have other cultural exchanges and other tours and to expose people to the continent and it is something that we want to make it ongoing so this is our first trip um, the cost of it is 2,444 US which is fairly cheap you get no no trips to Africa from the Caribbean any cheaper than this. And it is a package that involves ground transport, hotel stay. It is just oh, wow. a phenomenal package. I want to go. So, <laughs> you know, if you're interested, please give us a call. Give us a call through the Jamaica, Jamaica Luminaire Secretariat. And um, I can provide you with the information. I'll have it sent to you so that if any one of your listeners who are interested, please... Come join us. We are going back home to our mother. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was so inspiring, that last message yeah. there. And I'm definitely going to contact you with that uh, to get that information from you. And I'll send that out on my social media details for anyone that wants to be part of that inaugural flight. Please I certainly do. do. Please do. Well, it, listen, this Mr. Kenyon Brown. Flight, but it is something that we plan to make it a, a stay. Mm -hmm. And it is an amazing package, as Natalie said. It sounds like it. And I've been desperate to go to Ghana for a while, so why not an inaugural flight? Looking forward to finding out more there information. You go. Thank you. <laughs> All right, take care. Thank Listen, you. thank you so much again for your time. I thank you, and I will be in touch with you yes. very, very soon. Thank you again for enlightening our listeners yes. about the Lumi. And let's see where this next stage takes us. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure you. to Thank you, you so and much. your listeners. God bless. Thank bye you. Bye. Thank you again. Bye bye. Excellent. Excellent. HPQ, look at the time. So you you are on time today. You're not messing about, are you? It's it's You're thirty degrees out there. It's thirty <laughs> degrees out there. <laughs> I've got a fan. I've got a fan blowing on me right here. Oh, I've, I've got no windows if... open. Anything, otherwise it lets some sunshine in. It's funny, I have to shut my I have to shut my blinds because it, it sends a glare across the, the green screen. Yeah. So I have to shut my Shut my blinds. Everything else dark apart from the green, apart from the um, the, the lights. You know the lights. What they call them again? Yeah. The, um, what they call these lights again? I forgot what they call them again. Actually, not the spotlight. What they call these lights again? Ring lights. That's oh, the ring lights. Yeah. So I've yeah. I've got a ring light shining on me. I feel like I'm sweating. My blinds are closed. <laughs> you know. Show though. Excellent show, HP. Well done, man. It was a good show. I really I really enjoyed that actually. Yeah, I mean different different levels of different things and i think it's fantastic when you, you know what i mean variety definitely the spice of life when it comes to these shows i think i you think know? so 
And sometimes it's nice to end it on a good note because we had everything about the gangs and that's quite that was a quite deep and meaningful conversation and, and enlightening and got mm. us to start thinking. And, you know, a few women just want to go and slap a few guys now, I think, you know, and tell Adelaide them to get there. Adelaide's saying their... my voice. Adelaide's saying my voice is low. Okay, I'll, I'll turn it up now. Do you sound, does that sound loud to you? Adelaide's oh, you... my voice is low. Put well, that's whispering. better. I'm not shouting like I do when I'm doing my radio shows. I'm just relaxed. It's Sunday afternoon and I'm just chilled. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just had myself a... No, no stones today. I've been, I've been on the K fruit punch. Today. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, but yeah, excellent show, man. It's nice. The, all three guests were fantastic today, man. Fantastic guests. They I'm were, sure. they were, and I hope that everyone's learned something more about the Lumi. I hope you'll be willing to, to be a bit more open-minded about it, as opposed to, oh my God, there's a catch. There's no catch. Mm. You know, the, the, the Eco Six Federation have got together and they've put in uh, over a trillion dollars into this fund. It's a stimulus package to encourage people to get these wallets, to start collecting these loomies and then to trade with it afterwards. So you mm. are essentially getting the equivalent of 100 US dollars into your account every month until October 2023. I will repeat again, there is no investment needed. You simply download the wallet. I've done it already. Mm. I'm getting my hundred pounds, my hundred dollars. You loo me a month, and so You're getting what that money without any outlays? No outlays. That's fantastic. No outlays. Isn't it? That's Absolutely no outlays. But like I said, it's a stimulus package. It's there to encourage people to get it in their wallets. I mean, if you want to invest and buy more, then that's possible. But you mm. will essentially get this money in your wallet every month. And obviously, when the stimulus package is over and when they've sought more trade agreements, more retailers to work with, then you can start to spend the Lumi. Then, yeah. depending on market growth and, and solar energy trading, the Lumi could be quite um, a force to be reckoned for in yeah. terms of a currency. Definitely, man. Definitely. It might not. But like I said, the Bitcoin has been going on for, what, 10 years plus? And it's only think- now seeing effective rises but it's now going down so you need to give that time to the loomy as well we, we must not be impatient as black people is, and think nothing happens overnight does it no Do it doesn't I mean? it doesn't you have to be patient no it, it doesn't definitely man. Oh, man you know and as and, and as natalie brought up you know everyone's concerned about corruption especially with africa it's got that tag you know nigeria's mm. got that tag it's corrupt it's from there something must be going on some man's doing something someone's collecting someone's my the, details the you know yeah they're doing it all here already the amount of times sometimes you get your mobile phone and a series of people are calling you about a car accident that you're not even in a car accident someone has sold your details uh, somewhere you know what it's funny because you get emails remember at one time he's getting all the ones from amazon was he getting those amazon ones at one time Mm-hmm. About change your password, this and that, and think, you think, come on now. And the worst thing about it, sometimes you might get a proper legit email, but you're gonna let it go because you think it's gonna be a dodgy one. So yeah. You know, the phone calls that come through, the amount of phone calls I get. If I get a phone call, HP, and they ask me how my day's going, the phone goes down. I'm oh, sorry, <laughs> the phone. I might have missed some important calls, but if I'm gonna say hi, Mr. Winter, how's your day going? If I hear that, I just, I don't even say bye. I just end and carry on with what I'm doing. Cause I know what it is. Or they say, gone. or they ring you and say, um, they're not ringing to sell you anything. Okay. <laughs> you're not selling me nothing today, but tomorrow you're going to try and sell me something. Do you know what I mean? <laughs>